and so now we leave some space for Ricardo uh, okay. just to just... Hi, Ricardo. Sorry? Ciao, Ricardo. Ciao Ricardo, come <laughs> Long time no see. All good. I Hope you're know. doing well. <laughs> I'm doing great, yeah. Thank you. That's good, that's good. I sound gonna listen now, okay. Yes, we're the, the family is getting bigger. <laughs> and this is really nice. Okay. Um so Ricardo is a location designer at Cartoon Saloon. So just correct me if I say anything wrong, but um, and we'd love to know a little bit about what you do. Uh, what are your tasks? So your everyday life in the studio. Okay. Uh, let's say that location designer is, is mainly a concept artist uh, job. So you are in the start of the production, you are in the pre-production of the project, and you have to deal with uh, the request from the, the director of the, the movie, in, the, in my case of the TV show, because I'm working in the TV department. And um, so you are working in close contact with the art director and the supervisor of the art direction. And uh, it's exactly this, the, let's say the, the first start of uh, introduce, introducing the, the, the images into 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 the move the the, um, the ideas of uh, of the project so is uh, is i find it really fascinating because it's uh, it's like such an embryonal uh, state so you you can still change things you can still put some uh, ideas on the tables that that belongs to you and uh, so basically yeah is uh, a concept artist job in the start of the of the production and it comprehends location, but it can also comprehend props sometimes. Um, also, it depends also on the production, because, for example, my first production was a bit more a strict, so we didn't have much things to, uh, to, to invent, to craft by ourselves, but we had a strict uh, process to follow, which was like literally a, a sort of uh, um, just storyboards to trace, to refine, and, uh, and then to put in color. So there was not much space for the imagination. The, 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 the work that I'm doing now is uh, more enjoyable for, for me because it's literally, I have to, to put ideas every day. Like they give me like a couple of tasks. It's like, okay, make this mountain. Then I'm gonna look at the references of, my, of mountains uh, in Ireland uh, and uh, see some shapes, some uh, proposition, some uh, color uh, proposition. So is in um, in the um, crafting uh, section of, of my work is is really there is a lot of different things that that you can do. So you can start from uh, from line work, from some su super fast sketches, and uh, to discuss them with the author. You can start with uh, some color keys um, or some thumbnails, some narrative thumbnails that comprehend also the character. So it depends. Let's say it's a concept art task because it depends also mostly on the production and also on uh, which part of the project are you into, are, are, you, are you inside. So is, maybe in the start you, you can invent more things and then after some months you set the Bible of the project. So most of the design is ready and you just need to assemble all the, um, uh, the assets. So it's a, it's a bit less creative. So it's being flexible most of the time. Uh, of course, his location is not character design because it's, uh, it's completely different, but uh, there is a lot of flexibility, at least in Cartoon Saloon. I can't say in, uh, in many other, uh, for the other places because I am, I'm still a newbie, let's say, because it's just two years that I started working in Cartoon Saloon and I, had, I, I didn't have other uh, experiences in, in, in animation. But here, yeah, it's, uh, it's a flexible job about creating environment and all the tools that uh, allow the author and the, uh, the art director to understand what are you doing, what are your ideas. Sometimes also it comprehends writing, you know. Uh, so this, mainly this. I hope I didn't, I haven't been super confusionary. No, 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 it was a great explanation and also a great insight because there is yeah a lot of stuff, different stuff you do in different uh, like parts of production. Uh, which is amazing. So you get to see many different things. And so if I can ask, um, 
sector. We did we um, see something that was made by you in last movies by Cartoon Saloon? No, 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 no. As I said before, I am in the in the TV section. No, yeah, now. also TV shows. Uh, not yet, not yet. There is okay. nothing that is uh, that is out yet. The only one that I, I, I'm working like right now, I'm working two projects. The project that I'm working on now is uh, top secret, so they they will chop my tongue if I speak the name of it. But the okay. the first one, the first one is, uh, is is has actually been announced and is Viking School, and okay. uh, which is a production uh, in between with uh, Disney and Melusine Productions. And um, it, it's it's a really nice preschool project, and that was my my start of uh, you know of working into the industry. It was such a as you say a, um, a a formative experience. Yes, like your first really steps. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but you I don't think that you will find any images of what is the project now. There is just a couple of uh, pre visualization from. Uh, an artist okay. that are really, really from the start. Now the style is different, and uh, there is not much on internet right now to, to show, unfortunately. No, no, don't worry. In fact, worry. I have a, a void of two years of like <laughs> I have just some drawings to show, but basically that we, what we are showing now is my student work. In um, so it's, and, it's a yeah. bit a bit sad for me. <laughs> no, 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 it's great, great stuff, and I'm sure everyone is enjoying um, the presentation. So we will like. Sorry, I did something, I think. <laughs> we were enjoying the presentation, then I killed <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, just give me a second to share it again. My computer is really, really slow, guys. I think it's because of the heat also. Okay. I am slow as well because of the heat. Let's go back. Okay, here. And... Okay, I was um, so I was thinking, guys, just keep an eye out for this show. Maybe it will be released in a few years, and we can have a look at what you're working at now. And so, um, what what was your life like? Your work life, your experiences before Cartoon Saloon. So you did ID Academy right after high school, or maybe there was something before. No, there was. I, I was lucky enough to to have many possibility uh, of um, studying to to have many as you say formative formative possibilities uh, thanks to my family. So I started uh, to study after high school in uh, the European Institute of Design in Italy, Rome, YED. And uh, because I wanted to do 3D, and before it I was doing um, I, I studied when I was in high school. Uh, um, Scuola Internazionale di Comics, International School of Comics in Rome. Yeah. But it was super young. And um, back, like thinking thinking of it back, it was useful for, for the age that I, that I had, but I lost so many information during, during the years because it's a long time ago. So basically, let's say um, International School of Comics when I was like around 15. Then after high school, uh, uh, three years of European Institute, Institute of Design, and I wanted to do to to be a three D sculptor in the start. So I wanted to use ZBrush, I studied ZBrush and, and Maya, and then I had like a sort of in, existential crisis because what I was doing basically, uh, while studying three D, was basically just drawing, <laughs> and so I had to to deal with the fact that I wanted to to keep drawing instead of uh, working in. Uh, in the, the 3D industry, even though I love the, the 3D industry and the gaming industry. So after that, I went to Los Angeles for three months to study in Brainstorm School, at the Brainstorm School that is a great um, concept art uh, school. It's, re it's a really in intensive class. You can choose different courses and personalize your, uh, your week. Uh, each lesson is like a four hour lesson that you can put inside your week. And it's a really hard for uh, training that I think that was a, that was the real start of uh, how do you say the the, the concept the, the concept art studying for me that gave me a, a, a nice kick to get back into studying drawing in a, a more professional uh, professional way. And right after Los Angeles, I been back I went back in Rome and I started to study in uh, the, the academy. 
where I met a lot of super cool uh, people, teachers and, uh, and students. And I stayed there for three years. And after three years, I started to do a little bit of um, work with uh, one of the teachers, David de Cubellis, that helped me and trained me a little bit with, um, with his skills. And we worked for uh, some, I, I think three or four months. Um, I, I worked as, a, as his assistant. As assistant. And it was such an, uh, an hardcore, uh, but yet beautiful experience. It was really, really interesting and uh, super formative. I think it forced me uh, into, you know, knowing uh, the, the a good fundamentals of perspective of uh, narration of uh, camera shot and movement. That was like pure gold that experiences. And before that, I did like ten page of assistance with uh, with uh, Cristiano Spadoni. Uh, it was like a super fast assistance, but it was formative as well. And um, so after David de Cubellis and after two Amnesty festivals that we that I've been there with the school, um, I, I I've been contacted by by Cartoon Salon and they asked me for a test. I did the test and uh, and I two months later I was uh, I was in Kikeni. So it was it was I was kind of lucky, uh, let's say for for the for being hired in Cartoon Salon that fast because it was like three or four months after after the school. No, this is great, but you also studied a lot. You put a lot of effort, but it's great to know that you have such a, a wide background because you also studied 3D. Um, but do you use 3D uh, now, nowadays, or not? Just for you? No, 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 not, not really. Um, I, I think I argued a lot with 3D <laughs> many, many years ago. Sometimes I, I use ZBrush. Uh, right now I'm doing a, a class that requires ZBrush for studying like anatomy and stuff. And uh, let's say all the skills that studying um, a 3D programs gave me are still a little bit there, which means I don't remember anything of Maya. But if I if you open like on a laptop in front of me Google SketchUp, I, I know how to use that. If I need a, I need a 3D base for a concept, I know how to, to do that like pretty easily. But I'm, I'm not like a render artist or a sculptor or anything like that. But I'm trying, I, I don't know, I try to avoid to use 3D a lot uh, right now because it's, um, since I'm working in, um, in, a, in a studio that is so um, yeah. synthesized in its style and it's really flat, like the perspective is flat, the color is really painterly. Uh, the, you know, using 3D for helping, helping yourself for, uh, for perspective is a bit of a, of losing time. I, I will integrate it back probably, but but not now, not now. No, I saw that in, yeah, maybe, I know it's not what you were doing, but that in some shots in Wolf Walkers, they use it like 3D, a 3D camera uh, on uh, to 2D drawings. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I saw mm -hmm. like this small shot and it was amazing. The, the way they can give you the 2D feeling, but using 3D as a tool and yes, it's yes, great. Yes. Yes, I. It's really helpful. I I think to know 3D. When so, when you manage to integrate the, the the 3D into a 2D workflow, you can create really interesting stuff without you know I would say uh, crossing the the border and uh, becoming you know and transforming your uh, your project into a 3D project. It's it's really fascinating when 2D 3D manages to help 2D to express yes. and not vice versa. You know, but yes. it's, it's I guess it's really difficult. No, it was it, it it was really amazing to to see that like that behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, um, so you um, like met the cartoon salon recruiters at Annecy, or you were contacted after, and you didn't meet before. How did that happen? No, I in the second years of um, of the Idea Academy, we went all together with, uh, to Annecy for the first time. And, uh, and there I started to do some, tried at least to do some networking. And there I, meet, I met uh, Nuria Blanco, which is a really nice person. And uh, one, in, in, at this time was a recruiter uh, in Cartoon Saloon. She's also a producer and stuff. But, um, and, and she was really, really kind. And she helped me uh, to understand 
what I, I needed to, um, to, to change in my, in my portfolio, what they were asking for uh, and uh, what they were looking for in Cartoon Salon. So basically they told me that I wasn't ready yet, but I, you know, I, if, I, if I would have put a little bit of, uh, of effort, it, it could have been possible for me to, to get there. So uh, I did another year of, um, of the uh, ED Academy, uh, because I really needed that. I wasn't ready for, for work or anything. And, uh, and then we, I, I went back to NEC and um, I met the, the same people, the same recruiters, and uh, that they remembered me and, uh, and they, they saw that I, I put some effort into my portfolio uh, and I remember their, um, uh, their requests, you know. And, uh, but it, it ended there, like, all oh, right, okay, that, that, that's great, uh, we have your contact and stuff. And like two or three months later, I think in September, they contacted me back because probably what it happened is that one of the people that got a contract, they refused the contract. And they was looking. They, they were looking for um, was where? Oh my god! Anyway, they were looking for um, for another person. So I was looking for a, an internship because I, I didn't thought that I was ready for for working. So I was like, okay, give me a, an internship. I'm gonna be there. You don't pay me. I don't care. I just I can enter there. You know. Uh, but they actually asked me for uh, for a test right away. So I made the test. And uh, apparently the test went well. Uh, they gave me, they, they asked me for, uh, for a little uh, Skype interview. And the day after, two days after the test, they sent me the contract. So it was pretty smooth. But yeah, it took basically two years to, to, to enter. Uh, not, it wasn't fast. No, but it's, it's a great adventure. And uh, so they asked you to, to relocate Yes. To Ireland straight away. Okay. And yes. how was that? How was like living? Oh, uh, for, oh, for, for me, it was a dream. <laughs> I I needed to to go away from Italy for for a little bit to to get away from from my everyday life there in in Rome, and I think Ireland is one of the best places to to go yes. and uh, find some uh, some routine, some peace. Uh, let's say Kikenni, I was really scared in the start because Kikenni is like a 21,000 population uh, town. So it's really, really small. But, uh, and I remember like the taxi driver for the, the first day that I arrived, it's like, he was describing me Kikenni. You see Kikenni is two roads, like across. Is that road there? And that road there. That's, <laughs> that's Kikenni. I was like, oh my God, I, I'm not going to survive one year like this. But, but in the end, no, it's a, it's a really nice town and uh, it's a really nice, interesting environment because there is a, there is Cartoon Saloon here, like literally there. And uh, in less than one kilometer, there is Lighthouse. And they are oh, two yes. really big studios. They are like two powerhouses of, um, of the animation, of the Irish animation. So basically there is hundreds of, uh, of, of artists just walking around, or, or at least they used to be now with the, with the COVID is a little bit different, but. Uh, let's say in, in the pre-COVID era, it was such an interesting and uh, vibrant uh, town. Uh, it was really interesting to meet a lot of different artists and grow even just for, for a talk, from a talk, you know, a talk with them. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I can't really imagine how that is because, of course, now we're living in Rome. So, uh, are you from Rome? Yes. Okay, yes, so it Rome. was like, a big, uh, a big leap going into such a small place. Yeah, change your life habits. But in Rome, there are so many places where you can find artists, uh, maybe doing like life drawing. But I don't think it's the same. That that I mean, a whole small town full of artists and like meet them at all the events. But uh, yeah, of course, COVID can change the situation a lot. So are you working from home now? Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm working from home. And uh, is, um, I mean, let's say I, I didn't travel like a thousand kilometers to work in a room. I'm not quite happy about that. But, you know, you, you do what you got you to gotta do. And uh, the, the experience of working from home was another, let's say, life lesson. And, and um, because you need to manage yourself and manage your hours. 
you don't have anybody that says to you that you have to work. Um, so you really need to understand your rhythm, understand your deadlines, your uh, your speed, your stamina, and trying to deal with with that, and trying to be efficient without going to to a burnout because it's, it's really oh uh, I'll just say. Uh, it's really after the corner, like this this possibility while you're working in a in a room 24/7. But I think a lot of people, even that doesn't work in Cartoons on rely on this uh, now that everybody's uh, are working from home. Uh, and a lot of people are happy. I I like the idea of working from home. I have a little room that is a, a little studio. I'm quite happy about about that. But I don't think that I'm growing up as as fast as I used to grow up before, like in the first five months that I've been here in, in the studio, because it was literally a different environment. You wake up, you go there, you you are in, uh, in, in the middle of, uh, let's say, sorry, uh, 15 people, 15 great artists, and uh, they, they are most, they, they are all better than you because they, uh, all of them have, uh, as you say, more experience. So you grow up really really fast uh, because you are literally surrounded by them so you just go uh, you ask something to a, yes. to, to, a, to a friend you see their screen they give you a tip uh, to, to how to i don't know to deal with fault with a photoshop thing so it's really really fast fast like the the the, uh, the learning curve is um, is it may be steep but it's fast because you are constantly surrounded by the people that are willing to help you. They are not trying to struggle, and that's the beautiful thing of of Cartoon Saloon. The environment is really, really healthy, and uh, and everybody are trying to be a, an inspiration and a and a help for for the others. And um, but yeah, so working from home doesn't have all these uh, these pros, but it makes you study how to 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 deal with the, with the workload and uh, to deal with the responsibilities. Uh, alone, so it's another way to to grow up, I guess. But yeah, technically, I think I'm growing a little bit less uh, faster than than before. But yeah, I I also think this is maybe the difference between working as a freelance and working in a studio. Now you're kind of experiencing what's the life of a freelancer uh, working from home, but you still have a studio. So, uh, but is, before COVID, yeah. okay, no, go go. I was. I wanted just to say that the problem is that I'm not experienced. I am experiencing a sort of hybrid because yeah. uh, I still have work hours. Because a freelancer, you know, can wake up at 12 and uh, work like 10 hours, go to sleep at three. You know, a freelancer can have its own rhythm is as long as he delivers. Uh, we don't have that. We we still have our studio hours. So I need to wake up. I write in the chat, good morning. Sometimes I enter in uh, in the morning chat and uh, we stay there like for half an hour saying, hello, blah, 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 how, do, how are you doing? And um, and then at six, you you finish your day. So it's literally the same hour of uh, as it could be if, if you were in, into a studio. So you you are in the house, but you don't have the, 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 the good thing of being a freelancer. Yeah, of course. But I was also thinking, how was life um, with your colleagues in the studio? Not work life, maybe you had meetings, you had maybe, I don't know, nights for life drawing or these kind of activities for team building, or maybe not, I don't know. Yes, 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 we, we, had, uh, we had that. Um, Cartoon Saloon, uh, before the COVID, was really impressive to me because they, they had this this uh, common mail with all the studio, so with hundreds of people, and uh, there was like workshop for uh, for live action um, studies, no, not live action, live drawing studies, or uh, there was like the cine forum uh, night, you know. Oh, and, uh, amazing! It, so you could just go there knowing that you could have meet other other colleagues from other departments, for example, and um, or. Uh, there was literally a workshop of many, many, many different things. Um, it was was a really nice, nice experience to to be a part of uh, of this, even if, if it was not not super long. I have to say, I didn't join many of these of these classes because um, be, because the, the the city is really small, 
So you are constantly meeting artists, like literally your friends, are, you are constantly meeting your colleagues. So even if you go to a pub, there was like literally two or three pubs that are like the official cartoon salon pubs. So you, you go there <laughs> and you know that you're gonna meet some people from the industry. And which is great because it's, it's just like entertaining, entertaining and creating a connection at the same time. So it was, it was a little bit of mix of everything, which can be also overwhelming, let's say, because since it's a small, uh, a small town, maybe you don't, you don't always want to see all of, the, of, of your colleagues, you know? Uh, but it can happen that you cross on the street like people and uh, it, because it's, it's really, really small. So let's say like the, the the good side of Rome sometimes is that if you don't want to meet anybody, no worries. It's a three million town. You're not going to meet anybody that you know. In Kikiken it's a bit different. But the, the upside is that it's, it's really simulating. Uh, it's really, really nice. They're, they're doing also like some... Um, uh, a planner uh, session for painting. It was a, a nice, nice uh, environment. Now they, now they are trying to build it a little bit again uh, because we are getting the vaccination. The studio actually is uh, providing uh, providing us the vaccine. The vaccine, so it's it's a, it's a really nice nice thing because maybe soon we will get back to the studio. So we will see. But, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope it. I I don't know it. You can start again with all these activities, but for sure, COVID is teaching us different ways to keep in touch with the people we love and with work colleagues. And yeah, as you said, it's a learning ex experience. It's a bit different, but still something worth learning. And so let's um, let's see uh, what your biggest inspirations are or were when you were studying maybe some artists maybe some movies maybe i don't oh, know maybe wow. some video games comics I, I don't even know because you said before um you were drawing but then you thought about a career in 3d so yeah i basically maybe, stopped for three years yes so maybe you were looking uh, for i don't know the film industry or maybe games and then you went back to drawing so which were your main inspirations when you were growing and also right now so let's say when i was when i was studying in in, in idea academy i had like a complete different target in the start of uh, of the studies because i wanted to be more realistic in my style i wanted to do much more um, uh, sci-fi stuff and i i really i am really really in love with with all everything that 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 is about sci-fi, diesel punk, cyberpunk, um, all of this kind of aesthetic, and so I wanted to pursue a, a career that was a bit more like a realistic concept tactics for um, let's say much more like a gaming uh, for the gaming industry of the, the live action industry, and I still like that uh, that idea because I I feel like. I am a little bit split because I love what I'm doing in Cartoon Saloon, but I also love to keep studying uh, how to refine my drawing in a more realistic stuff uh, way. And uh, and so yeah, in the start I was really really in love. I don't know with all this in cinematography, like all this uh, sci-fi cinematography, like Blade Runner. So Sid Mead, for example, you know, the, uh, an insane uh, one of the first uh, most important concept artists of you know, uh, cyberpunk imaginary or uh, Giger with Alien and uh, or, for example, talking about comics, I, I was in love with Ashley Wood or uh, the Studio 4C, Tatsuyuki Tanaka with the um, with the uh, tech on Kinkret or, uh, or his art with Cannabis Works. So it was like a lot of more realistic, more uh, a little bit of punkish vibes. And um, I, I was in love with the, I, I was such a big nerd. I played, I think, 300 video games in my life, something like that. I, I, I regret that a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, in, 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 uh, in the end, in the European study of design, it was a little bit different because for years I wasn't watching at artists. So I, I was basically studying uh, game design. So I was much more into the dynamic of the game design into the production of, of into the video games. So I wasn't watching many artists, but I was trying to understand the the 
the rules, you know, the the, the rules of uh, of the gaming process, the, the the design process for uh, for um, I don't know a map, an area, how the dopamine works when you uh, accomplish a target into a video game, uh, how you need to keep uh, how you can keep your audience engaged with something. So it was a bit more technical and uh, and less artistic. But yeah, I think my main inspiration, I, I think I would split them in uh, in two. So the, 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 that are of course connected, but I like to split them a little bit because sometimes I like to draw a little bit more realistic if I can, because I'm not that good. And sometimes I like, like in my, uh, how do you say, working life, I, I work in animation and I also enjoy uh, drawing uh, uh, something in a more synthetic way. So my favorite, Artists ever are Ashley Wood, Tatsuyuki Tanaka, Mebius. Um, my God, that's, that's different. Who else? Who else? Well, Ayao Miyazaki, of course. Um, of course, you have some pieces yeah, yeah. that clearly show your love. <laughs> <laughs> All, uh, Alexander Dibuan, uh, Akira Toriyama, uh, Satoshi Matsura. Um, uh, right now, grabbing the name from my head is a bit difficult, but but yeah, mo mostly this. Also, because when you are what, when you're looking for references a lot, I, I don't know, maybe uh, not many artists agree with me, but I look at a lot of images, but I don't quite remember every time the names. Like I remember in my head yes. the image of something in in my Pinterest like uh, page. I I don't know what it is, is that you know. <laughs> I don't remember the name. Oh, let's say one thing that blew my mind always is the art book of uh, Big Hero 6. That is, uh, it's simply, simply in, uh, insane. And, uh, or Tonko House, for example. It's really, really amazing. It's more from, uh, from the animation part. So, as you can see, then also the thing mixes because I also think that it's, it's nice to see to have differences, let's say, different passion, talking about aesthetic. And, and references that you can always integrate because even if I love, my, uh, let's say, uh, a much more realistic side of uh, of drawing, I still can integrate that aesthetic into an animation, or I can integrate something that is a bit more uh, preschool into a sci-fi project, you know. And then something happens. So, so you you can craft something new by melting things that apparently doesn't work together, but if you find the, 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 the right key, they, they can. So yeah, I, I would recommend to just try to look at everything and not saying like, like some people does, like uh, I work in animation, I just see animation stuff. I work in uh, comic art, I like black and white, realistic uh, comic art. Uh, so I just look at that. I, I think that's a, a terrible mistake. No, 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 this is totally right. And also it's like, it's really important for design, what you said, you can mix many different inspiration from different things, maybe not even art related sometimes and get some really cool ideas that work. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like I remember from Brainstorm, the one exercise that we had to do was uh, like the teacher brought a basket full of stuff, full of like junk, like piece of, uh, of uh, plastic, uh, old phones, pens, wh whatever it, it could could be, and he gave one to each, and he asked us like, okay, now in five minutes you have to design with uh, with this piece of plastic. It could be ever, anything. You need to design one environment, then with the same piece of plastic you're gonna design uh, a, a weapon, then a character. Oh my god! So li literally, it's like I'm taking this and I'm uh, I'm using it uh, to draw a spaceship. Uh, and you take the same object and then you draw another another uh, another thing and I, and that thing like blew my mind because uh, you can literally even look around your your room and you have so many patterns textures uh, color palette uh, or uh, associations that you can do to create things uh, that it, that it, after a while when you get used to it, it it gets easier to just craft new things even if you don't see references just look at your room and you can still have inspiration from from what you see. Yeah, you're right. And I don't know, maybe this is stupid, but I, you know, when you think about the definition of art and artist, uh, I always thought that like 
it doesn't make you an artist to be like the most amazing painter. But what makes an artist is, I don't know, trying to say this in English, to be able to see beauty where other people just see like maybe ordinary stuff. You can see that kind of light. Maybe someone said this before, I don't know. But <laughs> that kind of light, maybe a kind of shape. And then you can get ideas from that. And so basically everyone can be an artist if they just put uh, the effort and develop the, a good eye to, to understand things. I think it's a matter of yeah of, of of vision. Also, let's say that to me, I I really don't know um, what being an artist means. I don't consider myself an artist. I consider myself a designer most of the time. Like I consider myself an artist just when I maybe try to write something for myself for a project or for, yeah. or I try to express myself. But in my everyday life, uh, if I am working by in a um, working schedules that depends from the request of other people, I feel like a, a part of the chain. Uh, so I am more like a, a tool rather than an artist. Like an artist usually is a person that has a, a, an artistic voice in the project, let's say, you know? So, so the more artistic you can, I would say, the, the more choices you can do into the project, the more artistic, artsy you are. But uh, if you are like a junior, like like I now I'm, let's say a mid, a middle, but a mid, but is uh, I don't see uh, like working the animation in an everyday life as an art uh, thing. I I I, I think that the, the, the right thing to do is uh, is uh, to say is uh, literally being a designer and also like the, the the vision you know about you know around the world that we're talking about. I think it is, it is much more clear to, to talk about it as a designer vision instead of an artistic vision, because I think that is much more abstract. Even when you paint, it's, it's also uh, it's always like making choices, making choices of shapes, making choices of uh, saturation, hue, whatever it is. And uh, it's still design. Everything is designed in, in that thing. Then maybe the product can, can, be, can be art, but I would say that the, the real eye, it's in uh, that you need to, to build is a, is a designer right so understanding all uh, I, I would say breaking being able to break down what you see in a different way which means in a design kind of way so you know you see you don't see anymore like a fridge you see squares lines composition uh, chances and possibilities but that's design yes you're right to and me at least uh, no, no, that's no. my my just personal opinion. No, no, no. It's a great explanation. And um, also, I was thinking um, as you were saying this. Do you have maybe any plans and dreams for the future? I don't know. Maybe to become an art director someday, or in I don't know some different direction. Where do you see yourself? So let's say in the short term, I see myself working on a movie as a location designer <laughs> in the next couple okay. of years. Like I I, I, I won't leave a cartoon salon until I work in a movie <laughs> because because it's, uh, I, I'm sure that it's going to be a super interesting experience. And um, my objective as a designer in my life would be to be a production designer, okay. which is in the start of the pre-production and it's literally like, um, you know, a, a, a job to that allows you to, to to create a world. It's like most of uh, most of the time is world building. So you create the first sketches of the character, the first sketches of the environment, some color palette. You just try to give um uh, to to give life to to what the director wants. And I think that is a, a huge responsibility. I lived with a with a person uh, that, that that is a production designer, and it was really really inspiring and and impressive. And also because it was my age, so it was also a bit you know, sad for me. But um, I think that is where I want to go in terms of industry, because I, I love the pre-production stuff. So the, the more I am into the start of the chain, the more I'm happy, because the more choices I can, I can do and the more responsibility I have. 
So I would love to see some project where I can say, ah, you know, that scenario, that, that idea uh, of the whole movie, you know, that, that graphic idea is, is mine. On, uh, let's say, more artistic, a, a more artistic project, I, I would love to, to do a comic by myself. I never engage myself on, on doing comics, and I would love just to try to do something, not for, not with the target of selling it right away, or I just wanna do something to try to express myself. I always say that all my friends know, know it, and, and then they say, so when, when you're gonna do it? <laughs> I don't know, but, <laughs> but the, 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 artist, the artistic objective is uh, trying to express myself through, through comics and illustrations. So I have these, you know, these two souls that are always fighting, but I think I'm gonna be able in the future to, 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 to do both in, in, uh, in the years, hopefully. And the idea is to do a, a sci-fi con, because yes, this, this is course. what I, what I, <laughs> what I miss from, uh, from the industry. Yes, no, no, no. I and then I can wait. be complete. <laughs> can't wait to see these sci-fi comics, maybe with a bit of cartoon saloon hints in that i don't oh, know we will see we will see, we will see. A, a but yeah hints. you're gonna need to wait many years for that don't oh, worry yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i i know the struggle i have so many projects that are like waiting for me to start but i will start eventually <laughs> at some point and oh, yes, um so um what kind of suggestion or tips would you give to maybe recently graduated students that want to apply to different studios and more specifically to Cartoon, Cartoon Saloon, if you can say something, I don't know. Uh, any tips, any suggestion is, I think, really well, I, I can think of some, like, uh, one is uh, try to understand when the direction of, the side direction of the studio is going, because, uh, you are, you should not in your portfolio in uh, if you are trying to enter in cartoon saloon you you shouldn't just try to copy what already exists into the the you know cartoon saloon filmography but you should try to imagine something that is into car the cartoon saloon style but is going forward because uh, the the studio is always trying to innovate in itself is always trying something different in each movie and, and pushing the boundaries of each style every time, as you can see with the Wolf Walkers and before with the with the Song of the Sea. It's the same style, but it's, uh, it's modern and it gets modern each time. So what, what I would recommend is, that is uh, if you are trying to, to get enter in, a, especially in the movie section, uh, don't, don't copy, uh, don't just copy the style that you see for, for, the, for the things that you, that, that, that they already published. I mean, do that, of course, because you need to integrate the style and to show the producers or the recruit the 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 uh, who the recruitment team that you can do that. But try also to put a little bit of voice, thinking of what it could be the future of uh, a future movie in uh, in Cartoon Salon. You know, movies cost a lot of millions, of course. So <laughs> nobody, especially in uh, in um, in a, in a um, studio like Cartoon Saloon, nobody wants to do the same thing twice. They want to put a, a footprint of their style, but they want to innovate each time. So it's important to understand that when you're presenting a portfolio. And another thing that is, it doesn't, it, it's not for Cartoon Saloon, but it's, uh, it's like mainly in, uh, for everything. And it's something that I saw a lot in, uh, in a lot of friends, in a lot of uh, colleagues or students when I was a student as well is uh, that you know I'm I'm working I'm not super skilled I know what I what I what I can do I can deliver my things but I, I saw so many people better than me just struggling to to create contacts and connections and connections because they just don't know how to talk in public or they don't know how to deal uh, in, mm -hmm. a, a, a speech with a recruiter and this is really, really, really important, especially if you want to be inside the, um, the animation industry, because you're going to work in a team. You're going to work in a 15 uh, person people team, 20, 30. So you need to understand how to deal with people, how to deal with criticism, how to be social, even if you are not social. I am an anti-social person. Like I like <laughs> to be alone most of the time, but I know how to talk, how to engage a conversation, 
and uh, and uh, how to not be completely awkward all the time. I, it, it took me a long time to get there because I was a, a, a nerd scared of uh, of life, and I think like you know being a, a nerd scared of life is the part of most of the people that likes to, to pursue this career because we start Definitely. from that. You know, we start from that. It's it's natural. It's of course it's like that. But then you need to to understand how to literally how, how to handle social life in a in terms of um, of, a, of a job interview or whatever it is, because that's the center of uh, especially in the start when nobody knows you. That's the the key of getting a job. Like the the, the recruiter of uh, of Cartoon Sun remembered me after a year because. We managed to talk easily. It was a nice conversation. You don't have to be scared and uh, and uh, and be you know and, and and not talk. You, you need to you know engage, uh, be, be a little bit brave in the, in the start. Even if you sometimes you can look like an idiot, and I looked like an idiot many times in front of, of recruiters. But then we happen that a recruiter uh, remembers you, and that's the, the the center in the start. So no, I you say study drawing, but study also how to deal with uh, with social life. And there is like, for example, a lot of uh, uh, videos on TED, you know, TED, the, 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 yes. um, that are really, and, really interesting, that talks about, uh, you know, engages the public speech, how to, um, how to move, you know, the, 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 the language of the body, how to, to handle it in, into a professional conversation. They are really, really interesting and are really, really helpful for developing this kind of skills. That is the only thing that I think that, uh, is not is not teach in in the academies, but I think that is is really vital in uh, in this kind of industry. If you are like a comic artist, is different because maybe you work alone. You need to deal with uh, with fewer people, so it's let's say a bit less important. Still important, but less important. If you need to deal with a team, you need to understand how to to talk. Yes, yes. So this is, yeah, it's like a soft skill that no one can really teach you, but you can practice a lot. Um, a lot. In, that, in that, social that, meetings, that's yes. really, really important. It's really, really important. Because also, if, um, you know, I, I'm going to say this example, like, there is a good skilled person that is also a, a person that is uh, fun to be around, in, uh, is, it accepts criticism and is willing to grow up and his kind is open, you know? And there is a person that is like super good at drawing. He's incredible at drawing, but he doesn't talk. He doesn't accept criticism. He's too shy to even just be around people. This, the team, the studio will not hire that person, even if he's better than the other. So drawing skills is not only that, it's, it's, not, it's not the only vital skill that you need to build if you wanna be into, into the animation industry. Yes. Or into any industry. Yes, because as you said before, you are part of a team. You you kind of have to sell uh, what you do um, to start Absolutely. working for a studio, of course. So you need some skills to to do that. Um, I I remember I heard a recruiter, not in animation, um, just general recruiter for some company that was talking about um, getting the chance, um, giving the chance to this girl. To, to have an interview just because uh, her profile was amazing. She did many different things. She was maybe not the best fit for the job, but she was so interesting that the recruiter just wanted to, to meet her and have a chat. And this can happen as well, but of course, and portfolio is important. And I, I want to um, leave some space for the guys who are following. If they want to ask some, some questions, you're welcome to do that in the chat and we will go through that. Yes, and please. Yes, yes, uh, you, yes. You have Ricardo and just try to steal information from him, <laughs> all kind of information. <laughs> and while doing that, um, I just put your Instagram contact on this page. I hope you can see that. Um, I will also leave that in the chat so you guys follow, follow him, and wait for his comic, sci-fi comic. <laughs> ah, that's gonna, that's gonna take years and years. Don't wait for that. When it's gonna be out, it's gonna be out. If it's gonna be out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now you said that in front of uh, at least fifteen people. So now you have to do that. Definitely have to do that. 
So let's see if if someone Thank you, Debbie. yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't feel the pressure at all. No, no. Let's see if someone has some specific questions. Um, in in the meantime, I'm just curious, how were you as a kid? Because we talked about all these different interests. As a kid? Yes. How were you? What do you mean? Were you shy? Were you always drawing? Were you always watching movies? Or I, I was know. I was shy and awkward at the same time, which is a <laughs> bad combination because you are shy so you don't talk, and when you talk, you are awkward. So you best <laughs> you better shut up. So yeah, I, I didn't know how to deal with the world. Like zero, zero idea how to deal with the world. Uh, I was uh, drawing a lot of comics when I was super young, super, super young. And um, oh, sci fi yeah. comics, <laughs> as usual, like with some, some kind of Mad Max things. And um, then I discovered the, 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 the video games, and it blew my mind. As I, I think what I loved the most when I was a kid was this uh, feeling of world building around you that a video game could give you yes. you know when you are like 10 years old you're just amazed by that and that was something that i think really stick with me and uh, and made me keep going to try to to get into some kind of world world building job uh which is the the thing that i find fascinating just trying to understand try to to create you know rules in the world and uh, how the, 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 the thing works and try to try to feel literally the, the atmosphere of uh, of the world that you are building or that you are playing or that you're experiencing in a comic i was reading a lot of manga i not not a lot but quite uh, a, a good number of them and then my father oh, oh, oh there is a phrase Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can uh, just go on and then I can read the questions to you. Oh, that's... Um, oh my father. My father uh, introduced me to, to Mebius and, uh, and uh, Hugo Pratt. Hi, he's a good father. <laughs> he was a good father, yes, yes. And, and my mother was a, like, he's an, um, uh, an archaeologist. So uh, they, I, I was, you know, they brought me around exhibition a lot, all the time. And I was like, really being a, a pain all the time right now th thinking now of uh, of how i used to behave into museums when i was 10 I, I would just laugh myself in the face and see like you could have learned so much more you stupid little ricardo but yeah <laughs> so so no it was it was uh, I, I had good inspirations and uh, but yeah let's say that i was really really shy i didn't know how to deal with sociality in uh, any possible configuration. So I was like closing myself into drawing and mostly into playing video games, which is something that helped me a lot to create an imaginary, uh, um, you know, uh, to, create, to create a library of uh, imagination, but also was um, a problem because I was re really, really addicted when I was like 14, 15. It was terrible, it was really terrible. I'm glad that I'm out of, of, uh, of that that way no but it's it's great the, the way you grew and also i think all the things you did as a as a kid maybe are still are with you so they inspired you even if you know you say maybe i couldn't appreciate so much because i was so young but you still oh, for sure. i i like think you one, still one have of the that. Thing that oh sorry 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 no no just finish. One of the things that stick with me a lot is that uh, because of my father, that he, he was working abroad, we had to go to China for two times for a total of four months and a half, but it was like 12. Wow. And that was insane for me because I was not prepared to the cultural shock that I faced there. And it was really, really insane to, to do something like that in a, such a, an early age. And I think that, you know, my inspiration, I, I love like some... I love Asian influences into into my things sometimes. Not just Japan influences or manga influences, which I like, but it's literally like the the, the um, also the, some kind of uh, uh, also the the, the 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 Chinese painting, for example, or uh, some kind of scu sculpture that I saw there, or some kind of temples 
that I saw, or, or mountains, or just the clouds. The, 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 it was really different, and it stick with me. And I think that some kind of things are are still in, inside my personal personal work. Yes, for for sure. Okay, so now I can read David's question. Um, so he asks, what were some, if any, things you learned at IDEA or exercises, uh, etc., uh, that you think helped prepare you more than you ever thought? Like, uh, let me read. Uh, this thing at work is so easy because of something I did uh, at IDEA uh -huh. Academy. Yes. Yes, I know this. Um, is uh, it was like many things, let's say many things. I, 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 the academy, like I think, prepared me so good for many, many things and made me super flexible. But one of the, mo the, the, the most important things that I think is a bit underrated by the students in the academy is the, the storyboard class for live action movies that, that mm -hmm. David De, De Cubellis does, uh, which is, is really hardcore. And uh, if you want to do animation, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to follow because you know it's live action storyboard but is uh, is a class so uh, important for for making you understand the rules of cinema the building a, a 3d space you know because where your character moves and understanding how to 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 shoot the the situation in a good narrative way uh, in a good perspective environment and i think that was just pure gold to me. Also because uh, here it's fun because Cartoon Saloon is known for uh, its passion for uh, you know nature. So a lot of um, artists here love love uh, drawing you know natural uh, elements, um, yeah. trees, forests, and stuff. I am the opposite. I like structures. I like uh, cities. I like uh, building cars. And uh, this study of perspective that. Uh, David gave to me, and also then that that I I I did also where when I was assisting him gave me such a boost on that that is literally sometimes it's really easy to me to create some kind of different perspective in uh, in uh, in the in, in the job in in the location that I had. In fact, in the in uh, in my role is mostly perspective stuff against other people that are mostly like natural things you know it's interesting to know also what you are good at and try to fit inside a uh, a gap that the studio has so i'm basically the perspective guy <laughs> of the of the team yeah which and that is was pure gold. i recommend to to follow that class a lot because it's under underrated and uh, it shouldn't be you know, I I don't know if something changed it, um, after you did the master, um, because now we have another teacher that does storyboard, which is amazing, uh, Flaviano. Uh, oh, Flaviano. But I yes, think, yes, yes that uh, most of the things you said still apply, because the course is really intense, and it was great at explaining so much mm -hmm. stuff and making it really easy for everybody. Yeah, we did Flaviano, um, some class with Flaviano as well. Uh, but that is animation uh, storyboards that is uh, is really helpful because you know also storyboarding is uh, is a hell of a job so it's great that uh, that there is Flaviano that, that has a space ex ex exactly for the animation part but i think that in each each of like every student should try to understand a little bit more like a realistic um I would say uh, a way to build realistic spaces and uh, the, the live action cinematography language before getting into yes. into into animation because still is you know animation are, are still movies you know so they work with the same rules um, and so I, I think that uh, even if th there is no anymore not anymore David maybe you should get into some some manuals that t t tell you about like the camera shot, the camera movement, the, the grammatic of the movie, some movie breakdown, you know, some or some um, some really important author of uh, of the century, you know, stuff like that are really really helpful to build a, a library. Also, like like we said before, uh, if you do, if you're doing animation, you shouldn't just stick with animation, you know, because everything is connected. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, Flaviano covered this part. Uh, oh, that's great. 
yeah, 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 it was an amazing. Uh, I don't know if maybe there is, there is some other teacher uh, also in uh, master level two because I just did master level one uh, so far. Mm. But yeah, it was a nice um, part of the course, which I, as you said, I didn't even expect to like because I was uh, for me, for my particular, I don't know, um, way of drawing. I like to be precise and storyboard is really the opposite of that. You have to let go so many drawings, which are really fast, but it was fascinating in the end. Yes, but that's it was amazing. Good part because yes. you need to be fast, but clear. Yes, yes. And, and you learn so that much. Is really hard. I changed my mind so, so much about this. I was scared at first and then I saw a big improvement. So mm -hmm. thank you, Flaviano, even if it's not in the call. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so Flaviano. much. Thank you, Flaviano. <laughs> and there is another question. Um, can you, okay, <laughs> this one. Uh, can you reveal for us part of the entrance exam you did at Cartoon Saloon? I don't know. I, I don't know if you can. <laughs> or well, maybe just I... some hints. Yeah, uh, let's say I'm not going to talk about my my exam, uh, but I, I would say what you need to sustain an exam like that. You need to know how to create an environment in color, how to create the reverse shot, and, uh, and uh, to create some sketches about it. So it's like creating a portfolio uh, file, you know, with some pieces in color and some sketches that explains some detail of the of the setting. And you have like to me, they gave me uh, a day to do that. And um, and yeah, basically that's it. But it is literally the, the same thing that you will have to do then after, you know, uh, if you if you get hired. So it's literally trying to satisfy the request of the author in terms of design and try to explain as best as, best as you can your choices in terms of design. So you, if you were going to draw a room, you're going to, let's say, draw a shot of the room, like paint a shot of the room. So you're going to de define that shot of the room. You're going to choose the colors. Maybe you can put the palette, the color palette on the side. You know, the more data you give, the more is easy then to the rest of the production to understand. Uh, because you, we are not illustrators. We are concept artists. So we need to give information. We also need to write sometimes, you know, when, when you, when it's difficult to, to, to explain something that you're drawing because of the sake of the of this design, uh, it's, it's okay to write. So then write an, a little bit explanation, uh, number uh, a different, like let's say five variation of a statue inside that room, uh, draw in a faster way, let's say not paint because you will have a day. So you, you manage to do one refined painting and then the rest needs to be a sketch. So do a sketch of the of the reverse shot of the room, or do a, an isometric view, which is really really important for, for example, the the the, the storyboard the department because they need to understand the spaces properly to build the the situation, build the the, 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 the narration of uh, what is going to happen in that room. So I would say one color, one reverse shot, sketch, some variations of uh, some elements inside. The, um, the illustration that you're doing, a couple of uh, lines of text, a map, and an isometric view. So, so can you say again uh, how much time did you get to do this? Eight hours. Oh my god. Yeah, but is uh, what I'm saying is uh, also a little bit more from from what I did. I did okay. A color, a color, uh, the reverse shot, the isometric view, and that's it. But what I would do now, after uh, two years of uh, of of, uh, of work, knowing what they actually uh, ask, is uh, also doing variations of the object. It's always nice to to give uh, choices to 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 the the director or or, or the author or whatever is going to be that is going to see your work. The more choices you give, the better you're doing your job. Oh my God! No, this is. Amazing in one way and scary <laughs> in another way, but <laughs> yes. And, well, it's uh, scary in the start, but if you break down all the all the things that you have to do, is uh, is easier. I, it's really important to have like these these things, some post it and draw like in the start of uh, of your uh, your day, you know, because eight hours is literally a work day. Yes. You, if you are really into a rush, like if I am really into a rush, is uh, I usually do this, like I take. Like, 
couple of post-its, I, I write all the things that I need to do. So, okay, it's like, okay, uh, I need to start with get, getting references. So, I write getting references. Then I need to do the sketches. Then I need to do the, refine, uh, the refining um, line of something. Then I need to do one color. And then to each task, I put, uh, I put the time that I think it will take me. Like, like Anthony actually te teach us, uh, it was like time budgeting that I think it was such a gold, uh, pure gold to, 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 to know, uh, like such a great lesson. You, you need to, to budget your time all the time, especially if you are into a rush. So it's literally creating tasks, giving a little time to each. And um, I usually use a time, like literally I, on my iPad or on, uh, on, um, on the phone, not on the phone. Yeah, also on the phone. You can put a timer, so it's like, okay, this task is gonna take me 20 minutes. So you put 20 minutes and, uh, <laughs> and you see the, the numbers going while you work, which is super scary. You can't do that all the time, but it's really helpful <laughs> to rush. And you will be late compared to what you told. You will be always late, but it's good to have a rhythm. It's gonna give you a rhythm, this, this kind of method. Okay, I will try this, definitely. This one. Look at loop timer on uh, online. Yes, but it sounds uh, scary. I will try that anyway. <laughs> and we have another yeah, question yeah. It is from dead. Mark. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. So Mark asks, or Mark says, I'm going into uh, visual development master one this year, and I really like Cartoon Saloon. It's one of my main influences. Uh, do you know if there are any internship opportunities soon? And do you think it's a good idea to apply even if you don't see the most suitable vacancy available? Thank you. Uh, it depends. It depends on uh, on your skill levels. Let's say even if it's not the most suitable thing for you, maybe it can be a nice experience. For example, I wanted to be a character designer in the start. Um, and they asked me, uh, to do if I wanted to do both tests like character design and um, location design for uh, for Viking school, but then I realized that character design was a three months contract and location design was an eleven months contract. So I said, no, I'm gonna go with location, and I'm actually loving it. So you, especially when you're studying, you don't know really what what are you gonna be, uh, what you're gonna really like for for working. Maybe what you think you're gonna like uh, is something that after uh, after six months you're gonna hate you, you 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 can't know that so especially in the start if you're interested is and if the, the the vacancy is not that far let's say you want to do character designer but you have location design it's okay but if you want to do character design and then you get like i don't know compositing it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to, to to do that so you need to see a little bit uh, if that vacancy is that far from you, because of course it needs still to be into into inside your skill set. And uh, but yeah, I would recommend that. Like being flexible, especially in the start of uh, of your career, is important because you can't just help always. You know what what you want, like Rolliston says. So, um, so so yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would try to to enter even if it's not your perfect role. Then then you can try to to move. To other to other uh, to other roles. Usually here we have um, like internal offers that are just for us, and uh, you can try to apply. And if the studio is interested, it sends you a test. Like if you are changing uh, from a from a role to another, you need to do a test even inside the, the the studio. But you have that possibility, which is great. I think is a great thing from from the studio to do. And talking about the the internship, it depends. I have no idea uh, because the the, the how the work, the internship works, especially now with COVID. But I think it's always good to send mails and uh, tell people that you exist because you never know. Um, but especially if you are not based in Ireland, having an inter internship now can be can be a little bit difficult. Um, but this can change. Like let's say in like some a year and a half ago, uh, we had a couple of interns in in, uh, in the studio so it, uh, it i would recommend that anyway like even if there is there is not the vacancy like internship vacancy you know uh try to see uh in the in the site if you know which which are the contacts to 
to use and uh, and send your portfolio, try to have feedbacks, even if they don't answer. Uh, it's, I think it's good to do that. Don't harass them, but try. <laughs> so you have to be a stalker, but a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, I would say more than a little bit, but you know, <laughs> as, as I was, was saying before, you, you need to learn how to approach people. And okay, so he says thank you. And um, well, like, okay, and uh, sorry, my screen froze for, for a moment. No and I, I was thinking, um, where were you following like Cartoon Saloon to, to know about their opportunities uh, when you were looking to, to join the studio? So maybe people can, can do the same on LinkedIn or maybe on, I don't know, Instagram or. Oh, well. The fact is that in my in where I was, you know, trying to enter, there was no COVID, so I entered in a Cartoon Saloon because of uh, because of NSC. Okay, was, so you were was just really really okay. easy. Um, I I would recommend to 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 look at all the um, the the possible social networks. So what I recommend is LinkedIn for sure, and trying to also, for example, a good thing. Sorry, <clears throat> a good thing to do is looking at the um, screen titles of the of, uh, of the movies and see who's who's in charge, uh, who is in charge of what, and and try to um, to look at them in, on LinkedIn, which is a bit of a stalker move, but it's literally yes. what you gotta do, it, especially when you you are in the in the start. One other thing that is really important is. Uh, even if there is no physical festival now, festival are, are, uh, exist exists anyway. Like NSC exist, they, they did NSC anyway. It was uh, it was an online event, so there is still ways to um, to do these things online. It's difficult. It's more difficult. It's less intuitive, but try to inform, try to to to, to be informed of, of uh, what what are the the festivals. The, the animation festival that are going on online um, anyway, even, even if they are not physical, because that's that's a really, really important way to to start to to show people that you 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 exist and you want to, to enter into into the industry. So, yeah, I would say LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, ArtStation and uh, all the festivals that you can attend, even if they are just online, just do that. Okay, perfect. Just guys, just take notes. <laughs> Important, just like uh, NFT, yes, even it's... if it's just online next year, uh, it's important to do. And also, I was thinking so, how was your portfolio uh, when they like called you to give you a test? Uh, how many pages uh, and what stuff did you put in it um, to get noticed? Haha, <laughs> I need to remember it. <laughs> no, okay, I'm joking. Um, I think I did uh, 20 something pages, 24, maybe, maybe less, maybe a little bit more. I don't remember, but around that, that thing, for sure less than 30, like 25, I think, ar around that number, or maybe even less, like 18, something around, around that. Is, uh, I, would, I would have liked to, to, to have more. I have to say, my portfolios always lacked of, uh, of something, like because. I was always saying that I wanted to be a, a, a um, character designer or a location designer, and still I had, let's say, lot, many things, but I didn't have enough of uh, of location. I didn't have enough of uh, character. I didn't have enough of props. So uh, one thing that I would recommend is uh, trying to understand what you like and trying to stick with that with your portfolio. So if you are if you want to do location design, uh, and then you have a lot a portfolio with two location and uh, uh, ten pages of characters, the recruiter will be a bit in doubt about the fact that you want to do location, you know. And uh, but that can be also uh, a problem, like how do you say, uh, specializing in something, especially once you are entering in the into the industry, because you. You really don't know what, what who is gonna ask you what, like like it happened to me. So uh, the choices are two: you make a lot of stuff, 
for uh, for both of, of things. Yeah. <laughs> for for most of the things that they, that you would like to to explore, you do uh, two portfolios. For example, a good idea can be can be that uh, trying to split the portfolios in two. And uh, I don't know if, if the teacher of the academy will agree on that. So if you're oh, yeah, if no, they're no. gonna see it. But, but yeah, a, so, yeah, a good strategy can be like if you have a good amount of uh, of work, you can uh, you can do like okay, a character design portfolio, and you know that you want to enter in like three uh, studios for character design, and then location design portfolios for other locations like, for for other uh, this, um, studios, for example. But when you are a student, it's, it's a bit difficult. So what what I would recommend actually is uh, trying to to specialize yourself for what you like the more the most but not um not um how do you say removing all the other uh, department uh things that you that you can have because because like i said before it's not super it's not granted that you're gonna get the the, the job of your dreams but it can happen that that study of your dreams can give you another job and you need to be prepared for that if you want, if you are okay with uh, with entering, you know, into into a um, a job that is not proper the role that you were imagining. So it's I don't have a, a proper uh, suggest, suggestion. If you are really sure about a role and you just really want to do that, just do, just stick with that. If you are if you like many things, do many things, but you need to have a good amount for both things. And w one thing that I would, that, that I that I think students really should do is uh, dividing it properly. Don't do like character design, location, character, props, character, location. Do This is the, the part of location. This is the part of props. This is the part of design, uh, of a character design. Try So even if it's just one portfolio, there is little departments inside of it. And it's easier for the recruiter to understand what part of your portfolio is interested in too. If you have a mixed portfolio, uh, it's gonna be super hard for the designer, for the recruiter to understand if you're fitting that role or not, because he needs to scroll the portfolio all the time just to see three locations or or ten characters, and they don't have that time. So you need to make that 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 job for them is e easier, you know. Yeah, definitely. And we have another question from uh, Anna. She says, "What's the best way to present your portfolio through email in terms of introducing yourself?" In terms of introducing work yourself, can, can you explain what, what you mean, like presenting a portfolio through email uh, and introducing yourself? Like, you mean like, hello, I am this person. I, I want to I wanna know more. Yes, yes. Let's wait for Anna to. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, can I just. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, like, for example, uh, if you send your portfolio, like, what should I say about myself? Like introduce like should i say like what's my background who i am like what what should i say about myself i think i i think if you're sending a portfolio is your portfolio that should speak for you um and not much your your stuff your uh, your background and things because the background what <clears throat> where did you study what did you work on before <clears throat> it's something that you should have inside your portfolio as like as a last page let's say you should have it into into your uh, curriculum vitae inside the portfolio. So I think the message should be a, a kind, polite message of presenting yourself. Hello, I am, you know, a location designer, a character designer, blah, blah. I'm really interested in this role, but you should be short, polite and short. Uh, people that read mates usually don't, don't want to see what is your background before seeing your portfolio. So if they're interested in your portfolio, then they're gonna see what is your background, not the, the the other way. So I would put all your background, all your studies and, and things into a page, uh, into like as a last page of your portfolio. Yes, this makes definitely sense. Some, something like, like this. Um, yeah, be, okay, being that's short, very being helpful. Short. No problem. Thank you. So yeah, we we were talking about this also last time. So 
um, there is such a short time a recruiter has to go through a portfolio, so they don't want to get lost in maybe really long emails or, as you said, a portfolio that's not really organized. Yeah. They might miss something important that you did uh, just because, yeah, you have yes. to be really. Yes, imagine a person that is like looking at, I don't know, 30 mails every day, 40, 50 of people that want to get inside uh, inside the studio. And, and usually, uh, if they like the, the, the portfolio, they look at, at, your, at, at the person, but if, if they don't like it, it's, it's, it's different. <laughs> it's difficult that, that they see your background and stuff. Yes, it's probably the same also about cover letters, right? They just... Oh my God, maybe... they hate cover letters. Yeah, yeah, it's not really uh, something we have in Italy, I think. It's something that's more, maybe I don't know, maybe it's more British. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I'm not a, an expert of cover letter. I'm, I think I am the wrong person. Uh, but yeah, I, I try to do short cover letters and, and send the portfolio and, and see. Because us usually, I mean, we are into a sort of, let's say, meritocratic industry so you can talk as much as you want but if you don't have a proper portfolio you're not gonna go anywhere so yes but yeah th that doesn't mean that you should skip the cover letter you should like try to learn uh try to understand the template of the cover letter and uh, and do it as best as you can but i'm the wrong person because i don't write i don't write a cover letter in two years so <laughs> yeah no but you're right you have to let like let your portfolio speak for yourself and then they can maybe meet uh, the person behind the art and okay so mark um is asking if it's is if it's possible uh to send you uh, our work for feedback so i yeah, see definitely. yes he's going straight to this talking <laughs> if you are if, if, if great mark if you you all have the time we, we can definitely do that why not why not? Uh, we, why don't we share it here, like in the chat? Oh, you know, this, I think it this could is be interesting. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, let's make it like a, a conversation. I think as, as long as people want to stay here and have a talk, why, why not have the chance? Yes, so yes. Uh, who can, uh, who is interested to, to show their, their stuff? Uh, I think they can send it here or I, I don't know, uh, Raquel, since you are like the, the, the no, chief no. of this situation. It's definitely you know? okay, but uh, if you are okay with that, we, uh, we don't want to steal your time. But um, also, no, no, no. for everyone who is showing stuff, remember that we are recording and uh, this is going on YouTube at some point. So if you're not okay with showing your stuff, maybe then we will just end the re registration here and just put online what we said before. And this part uh, maybe is just private for us. Just guys, you write to me after the call and we will decide about this. Yeah, no problem. Do you, would you like to, um, to share the screen, Raquel, and, and show the, okay. the stuff okay, to I everybody? So everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, I'm, I'm not just reviewing one person, but I'm reviewing one person for everybody. This is really a nice idea. So let me <laughs> um, stop sharing what I'm sharing now, which but I hope you... I, I, I'm, you know, I have a lot of gaps, so I'm sure that a lot of our students will be like... Anna is, so. going, uh, is doing like, um, how you say that? Um, saying good, good things about you, like good... Ah, missing the word. Uh, ah, I'm reading, reading. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes, yes. Saying you're really good, so just be prepared to get lots of messages. <laughs> <laughs> we will we'll see. I, I have no, no rush. Okay, so let me see if I can share the screen like this. Uh -huh. Okay, just tell me if you see um, the portfolio. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, uh, where should we start? <laughs> oh, whatever, whatever you you want. Let's say, uh, let's say visual development, since it's mostly what I do. <clears throat> oh, this okay. is so cool. I let's see if I can um, 
no okay this is okay i don't know if you if it's big enough for you to yeah i think so yes yes I, to, I to would, see and, and will... say something and then I can, <laughs> yes i can go this way okay so just tell me what to do i will do that and you can uh, if you if you could just uh, scroll all the image now like okay perfect <laughs> nice. Oh yes, I could scroll down, but now that we have this zoom, I think I need to go on the on the right, like clicking. Ah, oh, it's okay, it's okay. I missed one page. Okay. Yeah, let's let's say let's let's do like that. If you are all agree, let's just see an overview of all this stuff like quick because of course we don't we don't have the time to see each drawing and, and then i i can do a, a little comment so oh that's cool wow i love this um this gray values yes yeah it's except it's, it's exactly what i'm saying you know it's like he's doing a lot of variations of what you're gonna see inside which is exactly what what we need into a, um, a visual development. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. But just tell me if I'm going too fast at some point. No, 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 it's perfect, it's perfect. Ah, that's so cool. I love this page. It's really cool. <laughs> Sweet. But you, you guys are great. I, I should learn from you, not the oh, opposite. No. Maybe I can do it like this. This is too small for you to see, I think. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. I Maybe. Okay, can you ah. move it like this? But then yeah, it's maybe too big. You, maybe we can do one thing. Let, give me one second. Why you share the screen? I can, and you show it to everybody. I can also do it and look at the work real quick, quick on my page. I'm doing it now. So this is Mark. Ah, Mark. Okay, Mark. Great stuff. I kind of hate you. <laughs> you have a lot of things. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing that I would say, maybe I'm wrong, so I'm going to finish, is that I don't see many, many color studies. Maybe I'm just wrong. Yeah, I see a lot of line work, which is great because most of the things is being you know, of being a concept artist is being fast and efficient. So line work is, is great, but I I really feel that you look like a little bit scared of color sometimes, which is, doesn't mean that you are not good at because the stuff that you do is really great. But I, I I can really tell that you love black and white, and I feel it because I am exactly the same. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Well, so that's that's great that you are focusing on uh, on uh, values and uh, and grace. But I love the shape. For example, if you go Raquel in the in the, the there is one uh, one drawing in faces. You know, there is visual development and faces. I, th I think yes, because I was I zooming so insane. much in. No. The work that you're doing with uh, the experimentation, yeah, it's, it's the one on the right after visual development. Okay. We yeah, like the, the first one, I, th I think is uh, is really insane. I love the the way that the the thing that you are building. One second, everybody's calling me. Okay. I love the study of shapes that you're doing. It's really nice. It looks like you're you're liking experimenting, uh, and and it's really really great. I would like to see a little bit more of uh, um, um, 
consistency into the 3D spaces sometimes. I really, I see a lot of stylization here and it's great because, you know, if you are into animations, it's great. Um, but maybe sometime it would be good to um, to draw the, the, the spaces like I, I was saying before, if you are if you're interested in, in illustration, like these things are great. Maybe I should share the screen, you know, so everybody knows what I'm. Yes, about. you can do what that. Do well, one second. Now you can go. Sorry, guys. Take one minute. Also, uh, because my computer is a bit slow as well. So. Uh, uh how can i do it oh my god don't use oh con... do you know how to share the screen oh okay Found it. yes Found it. Sorry. it's on the right of uh, bottom part of your screen okay so can you see it no yes yes we can see it <laughs> yeah, sorry if I'm taking a lot, of, a lot of time, but for example, I see a lot of uh, like um, work that is really great for illustration. It's really, really great. Um, but I don't see many coordinates for the three in terms of 3D space for the location, for example. This is really, these are really great experimenting page. Uh, but yeah, for example, this piece here is great. And it's really great the fact that you explored all these character, all these um, these props, but what is going on here uh, in terms of, of space? You know what I mean. Uh, I would I would like just to see a little bit more of uh, experimentation in terms of uh, location coordinates or where the character are, because is is a lot. There is a lot of illustration here and uh, less not realistic. No, not realistic. Um, you, you can, um, how do you say, even if you are working on uh, something that is really, really flat, it doesn't mean that uh, you can't create, um, you can't explain um, an environment, you know, even if the style is really, really flat. Like, for example, work workers is crazily flat, but in, in the visual development, they, they created uh, stuff, material that helped the storyboarder to understand where the guys move. So it's really great what, are you, what you're doing. The, the, the thing that I would say is just like try to focus. If you're interested in into the industry, try to focus a little bit more into into um, the, the visual visual development tasks and uh, to add uh, to 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 your uh, to your work in illustration because the illustrations are great. So I wouldn't say don't do illustration. I would say add some coordinates. Uh, add some um, some data, you know, of uh, of what is going on. And another uh, another uh, tip that I can do is like, it's cool this page, but I wouldn't have choose this color. Like this line work here on why I don't really really like it. I think like it doesn't uh, really make the um, the, the the characters and the and your line work uh, stand out. So I would just use something a bit more neutral and less uh, invasive that that flatten a lot of uh, uh, a lot of, of, of values. And it's one of the mistakes that I used to do before as well. I, I used to put a lot of crazy heavy colors into my portfolio. But the best thing that you can do probably is putting a portfolio in light gray or in a, into a neutral color that is light and makes your character stand out instead of making them uh, like uh, mixing with the background. And uh, like the, the inverted lines are not really great to understand your skills. It's, it's a bit difficult to me to, to see that. But that's it. Great stuff. Con congratulations. OK, what's the next one? Is there somebody else? I don't know if someone else shared. OK, yes, David. Um, if you want, you can like keep uh, sharing your, your own screen so it's easier. Sure. Uh, ah, David, OK, yeah. Oh, he sent uh, yeah to you the portfolio, so you have to download it. Oh, that's cool. Um, 
can take a moment. Tell me if it's taking too long. I don't know what's your no, time no. limit. No, no, we, we don't we don't have any time limit. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna share the screen again. Davy, let's see. Ciao. Hello. Okay, I think. Can you see everything? Uh, yes, I will know. I see a black screen. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. One second. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Try again. Now? Yes. Ah, see. Here it is. Okay. Well, we start pretty good with the first page. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh -huh. So cool. So you like photo bashing, right? Uh, a, a little. I'm trying to find a balance between, um, I guess, tools. But uh, I, I mean, eventually, I just want to paint it. That's, that's the most fun. So the closer I can get to that and just use photos or, or 3D to help uh, get me faster. So you are, I can see that you are much more into a 3D um, and stylization. And so I am a little bit in the other side. So I not super confident in giving you advice because this is not really my, um, you know, this is not really my background because uh, Cartoon Salon is, is completely different, but I love this kind of yeah. design and something that I like to, to do sometimes in my free time. And so, well, everything is just really, really cool. I I can see that you are interested in something like much more like as a gaming industry or 3D movies than uh, than a 2D animation. Um, oh man, I I don't know. I I I I would say just and animated or just films so whether it's 3d or live action or um, 2d animation films that's kind of where my um uh, my my interests lie and I, I feel like very similar to you when you were saying like oh you were really into more realism and maybe the stylized realism and then you transitioned into kind of into more stylized um and so i I think this portfolio reflects a lot more of maybe what I try to accomplish and put push myself this year rather than my exact interests. So oh, of I course, of course. Um, this is, I mean, you're still if you're still studying and trying to find yourself, it's it's great. Yeah. Um, man, this is insane. I don't even know if I am capable to do like the, these kind of illustrations anymore. And <laughs> it's really cool. What, what I what I can say to you is that I love the um, I love this one. This is insane. Like your work of um, of lines of diagonal CS is super cool. Uh, the only thing that I like less is uh, is not not your painting skill because they are great. Is uh, is the design? Mm -hmm. I, I would I'm thinking like uh, that there is still something that you can. Uh, of course, we can improve everything, but what I would say, like I can improve everything from myself, but I, what I would recommend to do right now uh, is uh, trying to focus yourself a little bit into understanding a little bit more the three-dimensional space of, of the characters and the, the props. For example, like this, uh, this uh, spaceship, which, which, which has, has a lot of potential, is a little bit strange in terms of uh, of 3D space. I don't understand quite well what is going on here. And um, and yeah, I would try to push a little bit more the, the precision of the design, which which means like studying more like a little bit of perspective and studying more a little bit of, uh, of anatomy um, in, in ways that you can build alien anatomies, like for example, these characters are really cool, but I find them a little bit generic. Like if you see this character, mm -hmm. 
here or, or here. They are really well executed, but they lack a little bit of, um, of uh, brave design choices. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's, I, I think uh, every idea teacher for sure re repeated, repeated that to me a lot. <laughs> I think here. Oh, sorry. Keep going. I didn't want to interrupt. No, no, no. That's that. That's it. That I was saying. Yeah, but just man, you have a great te technique. It's it's super good. Like it, it's fun because it's um like I, I saw two portfolios that are exactly the opposite. They are both really really good, but one is going toward a really really extreme stylization, and this one is going towards a much more realistic approach. And what I could say to both of them is actually try to look at more references, try to break down a little bit more reality and what you're trying to integrate into your design and trying to do it in a more precise way. Uh, like, okay, this, this face here, you know, those, this face here are, yeah, they work, but they look like a little bit, um, like I said, a little bit generic, a little bit, it's something that I've seen already a little bit and it's something that um with a little bit of more study with a little bit of more tweaks of shapes of stretching and of mastering of the anatomy of the human body and in, in, of and the creature body it can improve like a lot i'm uh, i'm sure of it i think this one is the character that worked well like what work, work the best like i mm -hmm. think the, the the shapes are really clear his face is uh, is more interesting here is already, okay, those are sketches, so it doesn't count well. But here you can see they, there is already an app, uh, a maximization, I don't know if I say it right, but this guy here is really, really like, it, it looks almost professional to me. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, but when you go, go, come, go here and you see like an alien form with these um, female cubes, it's like, okay, it looks like to me a good starting point. Same here is um, what is this, um, you know, this pattern? What is what is happening into this pattern? What is this basket here? It doesn't look super alien to me. It looks like a bit like, you know, a bit generic, you know? So it's something that, for example, you can explore on the side and say like, okay, what this guy is bringing uh, in, into his basket, into his bag. Uh, mm -hmm. th this bag is made of what and uh, how can I put it? into an alien character and not make it look like a human bag you know what i mean yeah absolutely but yeah it's insane stuff same stuff and uh, going back here is the same thing i i think you need a bit more of uh, of references because uh, your work is looks really really nice but lacks a bit sometimes of uh brave design choices that is yeah. what it he create the personality, you know, this, like this dog, I can see that he's a policeman. But, but it's, yeah, but it's, it stops it's not there. Steady. Yeah, it stops there, sure. you know, exactly, exactly. You're, you you got the point. It's like uh, a guy that is, he's look a bit harsh, but then you, you don't know much more of it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, and also I can see, especially when you go into the animation side that you you are a bit stuck with your realistic um, uh, realistic view, so you are not trying uh, like to break proportion a lot. They are all really really realistic. That can be a style, of course, but then uh, if you're interested in this kind of style, look at some artists that do to, to the animation, maintain the, the maintain good proportions, but for example, manage to create a, a, a different view into the realism, let's say Alberto Mielgo with uh, Love, Death and Robots, for example, you know, which is oh, mostly sure. realistic, but they have like a taste in texture, a taste in uh, color that is completely away from the, the, the realism and it has a, a proper voice. So if you want to keep that kind of proportion, find another way to make your, your drawing stand out. You know, that's, that's my, my two cents. And also, let's say, guys, like I have two years of experiences, so don't take my stuff for uh, uh, as a as pure gold, you know, because it's it's not. It's just a personal opinion. <laughs> no, it's it's great. It's been really awesome to hear all, all of it because I, you know, because you're I feel you're so close to where I am. It's it makes everything like all my doubts 
and all or the things that I thought maybe were stronger, you know, more clear of that. Yeah, I do need to work on uh, more fundamental perspective knowledge and and really try to, anatomy and you know, all these things. So it's great. Thank you. Yeah, try to um, like I was saying before in the start, uh, take some object from your room, like I don't know these things, you know, a thing like that. Draw it in different spaces, you know, as a as it is, literally as it is, and then try to modify it and integrate it in your in your uh, drawing. This is exactly how you build like some kind of design. You know, it's like putting little bit of design bricks, but you need to start from a good reality, a, a good uh, a good base. You know, you can see in your design where you look at references the most and when less. You know. And you should cover mm. that gap with more references and uh, observation. So that's okay, it. Yeah. But, but great stuff, man. I, I don't even know if I can, can do that thing. <laughs> so, oh, no, no. Really I'm, I'm sure you can. I, I know you I, can. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ricardo. You're welcome. And we have another another portfolio uh, by Nirto, and also a nice message. <laughs> I don't know if you can uh, read it, but I can I can read it out loud if you want. I know Mirto. Hello, Mirto. How's it going? So Hi, long. Ricardo. <laughs> really happy to see you. Uh, yeah. I'm fine. Uh, stress, but fine. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, well. Stress is is part of life. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, al always weird as as always. <laughs> yeah, it's the normality, <laughs> you know. Oh my god. Oh, that's that's fun. That's fun. It's nice to find you here. So let's see your stuff. All right. So Mito was in the. In... You were like in the class after me, right? Like ahead of me. Am I right? Uh. I remember I was at the third year and you was the, uh, to the second one uh, when we yeah, met. I... Yeah, yeah. Fun times at the uh, at the uh, yeah. Interesting times. <laughs> Crazy really interesting time. time. I, I, yeah. I was a weird. I was still on trying to understand how to react, how to talk with people. If you if you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was a, such a, a weird person back there. Anyway. <laughs> Let's see. That oh, was for oh, Maya, not for us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ah, that's cool. Let's see. Okay, first thing to see to say to you is like try to have a font that is a bit more clear and and clean. Yeah. Here, because it is a uh, is a bit hard to understand uh, to understand this, and uh, I think a good title in the start is a. Uh, a, a nice presentation. I love this. This is really clean and it works. So, which is exactly the mistake that a lot of students does, and I, I used to do a lot, like having a little bit of skills into um, into graphic design, into understanding, you know, what stand out the best into your font and into your writing can be really helpful. So this texture here is really really noisy. And you're using a color that is the same color of the texture. Okay, so uh, there is no contrast. Uh, yeah. The, the texture itself is really, really strong, mm -hmm. and uh, and the writing is uh, not super clear. Yeah. So I, already this thing is saying to me uh, some lacks that you have, and you do don't want to do that in the in the second page of your portfolio. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Oh, that's so cool. Nice. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have a look a little bit and then I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> so what is that you wanna that you wanna do now? Uh, is like animation. For now I really uh, don't know because uh, has uh, uh, like you, I was uh, for the uh, movie industry, but now I'm trying to understand uh, if uh, it's not uh, 
what the uh, the best choice for me. So I like also the animation, but uh, I really don't know what type of uh, um, things to do in specific. So for now, character design is to uh, maybe it's too much. So now I want to focalize. In fact, I want to do the second here and uh, uh -huh. to understand what i really want to do <laughs> but probably uh, i will change my mind many times uh, in the future so mm -hmm. <laughs> well a good thing to do if you are not don't have the idea clear is like uh looking at, at a lot of uh, material like like to understand if you're really interested watch a lot of animation movies for example Re read a lot of comics you know look try to analyze what you are feeling while you're watching that stuff and see where your interest goes the most so try to consume entertainment a lot and see where your your interests go not in terms of appreciation of that kind of entertainment or but in terms of in, um i'd say of interest or what you would like where you would like to go like there is a lot of stuff that you that for example i like to see but i would hate to draw or to work in. So it's try to consume a lot of that of, of entertainment. So okay. okay, what I see here in this portfolio is for sure um, uh, an animation portfolio. But like from what I can see is uh, like I was saying, like I just said uh, that you should look at uh, you should consume um, some a lot of entertaining. I would say a lot of material a lot of animation material mm -hmm. is because all these characters are, are really nice the problem is that they look a little bit more uh comic you know uh, fitting for for a comic rather than a, um than an animation okay uh, this why because i what are you doing here is uh, building yeah you're building the structure of the character but you're not Focusing or building a structure that is uh, properly animatable. Okay. Yeah. So you're so you're creating this character is super cute and it's great, <laughs> especially for uh, for the start for concept. It's really great. But what I would like to see in all this stuff, if you're interested in animation, mm -hmm. is uh, to to try, especially in the character, to try to understand how the character moves into the animation. What okay. are the tools that we use into animation? For example, here in Cartoon Salon, we use Toon Boom, and we use the puppet animation. So how the puppet animation works, you know, you know, you remember the rig, you know, rigging, uh, 3D rigging. Yeah. So <laughs> basically the, okay. So the, anima the animation here, you know, ne needs a rig, if mm -hmm. it's not like the super classic, super hardcore animation. Mm -hmm. um, this means that the, that you should try to simplify some some things, some shapes, some uh, design choices to create an easier life for the animator. Otherwise, they're gonna need to animate uh, an illustration, which is really really difficult, you know, because um, because character character like this are mostly illustration and less and less uh, animatable because they, how do you say, you see here how the structure changes into the drawings, you know? Yeah. And this is a, a, a common mistake, especially in the strategy, something that I still do. I, I'm not a character designer, so I, I still do that a lot. But I would recommend you to look at a lot of uh, animation that you like um, and try to to analyze how the character moves, even if they are 2D, how the character moves in, into this fake 3D space, and try to see how the character, for example, rotate from uh, from the, the 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 side to the front, and how the artist create a synthesis, you know, for for that kind of rotation. Because since it's 2D, you need to create an illusion of rotation. You can't rotate the character uh, in a 3D space, so you you need to draw it, and um, so I would try, yeah, to to try to look at where you, I say, what you like the most into this this kind of uh, industry. What is the side that you are interested the most? 
and uh, and try to 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 analyze it. Try to an to analyze how they move, how are the synthesis of the characters when they move, and try to re uh, copy them. A good thing is that is like building a structure that is a bit more solid and trying to stick with it in uh, when when the character moves. Yeah, th this is really helpful, and no one uh, uh, tell me so uh, told me so. Thank you, really. <laughs> The problem is that um, that the academy is uh, you are in uh, level one, two, three. Uh, uh, now I'm finished uh, the um, first. Uh, okay, so, so I will start the second one uh, on September or November. Okay. okay. Well, you know, um, the, the the academy has also that the the, the, the task of uh, trying to make to make people try everything. So, for example, the work that you're doing here, to me, looks really, really great for, uh, but more for a, for a comic or an illustrated book, and still a little bit not ready for, uh, for animation because it lacks simplicity. It lacks simplicity. Um, I would say, sorry, it lacks of structure a little bit, and this kind of, uh, of, of, uh, of lack, lacking, it can be okay into a, into an illustrated book because you don't need to, to move everything. But not into animation. Into an animation, this means that you need to make also some painful choices because animation requires simplicity into the characters. If you are not studio Ghibli, that's a different thing. <coughs> Sorry, but so you're gonna see yourself trying to make choices and seeing what you need to remove, what you need to use in a in a different way, in a more simple way. So I would say like, yeah, look references, try to simplify and try to learn the structures of the character underneath the character. And as an exercise, I would I would do if if I were you to yeah. because I saw that you're drawing the turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's turn around. Oh here. Uh, before drawing the character itself, draw all the all the poses of the character. Uh, I would say draw the, the structure of the character in every pose. Before okay. another finding it, so you're gonna study two things before the before studying the character in a three-dimensional space. You're gonna study its structure in a three-dimensional space, and then you're gonna understand how to build the character on it. Yeah, in this case, I could could understand better the the real shape of it and uh, not cover with all the stuff and miss uh, maybe some proportion. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 really cool. I mean, the the the, the, the all what I'm seeing from uh, all the portfolio are amazing portfolio. You just need to put some some work on it. But that's normal. That's really yeah, normal. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for your lovely message. You're welcome. <laughs> so, do we have other portfolios or? Uh, um, no, I no, I don't see any other messages. But oh, that's that's. Thank you for your time. It's <laughs> yes, I, I I I have no words to to express my feelings. I am so grateful. Thank you so oh, much. No problem. No, it was a pleasure. Th thanks to to everybody. Thanks to you, Raquel, for for this initiative. I think is is really lovely, and it's something that helped both both parts because it helps also me to you know to stand out a little bit and um, it's it's nice it's nice to be uh, to feel uh, asked things and uh, and try to teach a little bit i like two, two years ago i was on the other side so i understand the struggle and uh, and i i like to be here as a support and anna is asking for a for another for a last question so yeah of course go for it nice um, so my question is, I'm kind of interested in working Cartoon Saloon because I really like the kind of stuff they make and I like their style, but that's not like my personal, sorry, um, that's no problem. Not my personal style um, that I use as an artist, like as an artist, I'm more interested in doing lots of like things with color and light and I don't think that Cartoon Saloon like does a lot of that stuff so I'm like a bit torn between should I focus on like the kind of 
color and light thing that I'm really into, you know, seeing stuff? Or should I like, yeah, I don't know. Do you understand kind of the question? Just like, carving um, something that I want, but... Yeah, uh, like, what, what are you doing in your personal uh, project? Like, colors and light, like, what does it mean? Like, color keys, color explorations? Um, like, I, I think, I'm not sure if you remember what, but I sent you, like, my work. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah, I'm, like, interested a bit more, and I think, do you know Celine Kim, for example? Do you, do you know her? Kim, Kim, Kim. Celine Kim. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I, or, I, I like, remember. Or like Elioli, Elioli, I want to do like, take my art into that kind of direction a bit, let's say, um, because I really love working with like lighting and such, like lighting in the scenes. Um, but I feel like Cartoon Saloon doesn't like really focus on the lighting, they really focus on like the graphic stuff. So I'm a bit torn between like, should I still like try to work for Cartoon Saloon and not do like the style that I want to develop or it's it's kind of difficult to explain the question but maybe you know what I'm talking no, about. No, I, I, I totally get it because uh, yeah, like exactly. I said before, I have it's, it's kind of souls. like, yeah, what you explained, it's, it's a bit similar, I think. Well, what, I, what I looked at, uh, what I see in your portfolio was like um, a nice sensibility of color but there was like a, uh, a lot of um, sensibility in, the, in, in, in regards to the three-dimensional space three-dimensional spaces, you know? So what it would, would have looked, uh, to me, that portfolio would have looked more uh, fit for, a, for a, a project that would have been 3D, not, in a, not for, the, for Cartoon Saloon, because the simply Cartoon Saloon is trying a lot to be, you know, to, to create synthesis, which is not always the case. And what I would say is like, you should absolutely keep doing what you like the most, because it's what you, it keeps you alive. And it doesn't it, and it doesn't mean that cartoon salon is the answer, you know. Um, if you like that, go for it. And also uh, here in cartoon salon, there is people that actually work more in um, in colors. Um, what I would say is, if you're really interested to go into cartoon salon, is uh, try to get to a compromise and uh, draw your themes but also find a way to express your color sensibility into a more uh, um, synthesized and to the uh, way in terms that you can sell it. Because you, you always, you know, you, when you do, we do for portfolios, we, we always need to remember that one thing is personal project, one thing is stuff that we are doing for getting hired. Some, the stuff that we are doing for getting hired shouldn't be just personal stuff. It should be something that it has an eye on the industry, on the style that the, the house that you are interested in uh, has. So you should try to fit into that place. When it's, it's in terms of personal stuff, you can do whatever you want. And doing personal project is vital. It's really important and it's really, really interesting to grow up. And um, I know some people that, for example, have a great sensibility in, uh, in 3D, like in terms of three-dimensional space, and they arrived here. So it's um, it's not that it's not everything it's not that everything is written on stone. It's like okay, Cartoon Saloon does two D projects, so I just need to do a portfolio that is completely two D. Because sometimes maybe a recruiter see your uh, color sensibility and is interested in that, and also it's easier to get to a stylization at some point if you have good. Um, uh, Good, a, a good understanding, a, a good understanding of the, the the 3D space, and it's more difficult to get, you know, from a stylized point to a 3D. So, um, so yeah, my final answer is uh, do you, do what you like, and then do a portfolio for Cartoon Saloon if you're interested in that. But don't mix the things that much. Otherwise, you're gonna have a portfolio that is confusing for both recruiter and you because you don't know where where your personal stuff ends and when, where your professional part uh, starts, which is a bit painful trying to separate your personal project from your uh, from the, the stuff that you do for work. But as I said before, we are not necessary artists, we are designers, and we should do what is request in terms of work. In terms of art, is your, is your choices. So don't give up on your choices, trying to integrate your skills into a to the synthesis into the, the, the portfolio, uh, the cartoon salon portfolio. So I, I don't know if that, that was clear.
Yeah, no, that was actually a really amazing answer. Thank you. That really helped me. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you. Yes, no, it, it was, everything was amazing. Like, I think more than two hours of <laughs> great, great, great tips. And thank you for the um, reviews. You're very welcome, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you guys also for joining. It, it was fun. It was really, really fun. It was Absolutely. really fun. It was my first interview ever. So I'm, uh, I was really, really, I'll oh, say. Su such an honor for, also for us. I'm scared. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget how to speak in English. I know, so I forgot that many times during these two hours, but that's okay. I guess yes. that's okay as you long know, as they understand me. Yeah, on the same boat. I, I totally feel you, but you have to <laughs> overcome this at some point. Yes. As we said, so we have so many thank you messages, and of course. So what can I say more? <laughs> If people want to send me their stuff, I would be glad to to answer to them. Like in my, I would say in my Facebook account, not in my Instagram account, because I'm not much there. So if I don't know if the students are interested, they can add me on Facebook, and we can you know and send me some stuff. This doesn't mean that I will answer like right away, but I will try to answer as the best I can as fast as I can, which sometimes can take a week, but you know better than nothing. Yes, definitely. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I, yeah, I, as I said before, no words to express how grateful I am. And also, uh, thank you for, for your time, for your future, future time, answering all these messages. No problem. <laughs> that no they problem. are coming at you. <laughs> definitely. Oh, well, uh, I, I will, uh, I will answer. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to everybody. And I would just like to say that this initiative is insane it's really really great and it gives light also to small artists like me that are just trying to dig their place into the industry so it's it's, it's great for both of both of uh, both of us is is a really really nice initiative and I, I hope to see to see other interview i will follow them and uh, yes uh, i will yeah. definitely um send you invitations for the next ones and also it would be maybe nice to to do like a follow up in some years. Let's see how this goes. But absolutely, you guys, absolutely. Uh, there are so many pro artists that uh, attended ID Academy. So the list is so well, long. Now, now the, the quality level is, is impressive. Like the, the, the quality level of the classes is, is growing uh, year by year. I'm seeing, yeah. I'm really impressed by, by, by the work of everybody. So <laughs> I will yeah. have many artists to interview. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Maybe so I should th try start to give uh, bad, uh, bad, bad advices so I have less, you know, le <laughs> less it's people that are trying. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, yeah, uh, keep an eye on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so, a lot. Thank you so much, and to everybody, like, have a great night, and uh, let's see you again in a in weeks for the next one i'm sorry a plane is passing by just now but <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much no bye, problem bye, have a lovely night bye guys bye 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 bye, bye. bye. thank you